together with Neural Sports Bitch. Yeah, the twins, they be checking in. Stacking up the green is the scene that you're stepping in. When it is a trend that we say making dollars, nerd talk with the sports bet scholars. We are live. Welcome back to another edition of the Euro Sports Bet Show. My name is Nicholas Harlow. We'll be joined here by my brother Tim in a little bit. Uh, but we've got uh, we got a good show for you guys here. We got four games in the NHL. We got the full 15 games in the MLB. We have the two playing games in the NBA as well. And uh but before we get into today's games, before we get into today's slate, let's take a look back at what happened yesterday. One went right, one went wrong in the world of sports betting. Another profitable day for me. Uh, that's, I think, three in a row since that really bad Saturday. Um, it was, I think, a 6.8 unit day on Sunday, an 8 uh, unit day on Monday, and yesterday was a 2 unit day. Uh, so very, very nice um, here uh, the last three days. Let's get into it. Uh, started off with a nice little winner, the uh, Texas Detroit first five under four and a half at minus 120 was a winner. Minnesota Baltimore first five under four and a half was a mistake. Um, San Fran money line was a loser. The Marlins actually won a baseball game. Imagine that. Uh, LA Tampa Bay or LA first five was a winner. They end up losing that game in what 12 innings, wasn't it? 12 innings or something like that. Um, that was just back and forth, back and forth. I came, I'm glad I got out of there after five innings. Um, Columbus, uh, team total over two and a half full game over six final six, three got the team total over in the first period with those Columbus blue jackets. So very, very nice there. Montreal Canadiens losing a shootout. So back to back days, they force overtime and, uh, lose. So that was fun. Washington Capitals are in the playoffs. They will be playing the um, New York Rangers in the first round. Washington plus 122 is a winner there. Lost at the over five and a half. Uh, so about broke even on that one. But um, they could be a little pesky team there. Rangers, we all know, have the uh, President's Trophy curse this year. Uh, so you never know. Uh, Toronto money line got a little hairy at the end there. They gave up two runs in the seventh, one in the ninth, but they win five, four. So that was a nice winner there. Florida minus one, never in doubt down two nothing at the end of the first period. Then a run away at the game after that finished five, two, which sets up a really fun playoff that, that set up some playoff implications because the Boston Bruins lost to the Ottawa Senators last night. So now the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round will be getting the Boston Bruins. I know these fans out there are thrilled to be able to play the Boston Bruins in the first round of the playoffs. They always they know how much success they have against these Boston Bruins. So I'm, I'm assuming they couldn't be happier to face Boston in the first round. The last time, uh, since the last time the Toronto Maple Leafs knocked out the Boston Bruins in the playoffs, the Maple Leafs have won four cups. It was 10 years before the moon landing. 1959, last time the Toronto Maple Leafs beat the Boston Bruins in the postseason. New Orleans Pelicans minus 115 was a loser. They were up eight at the end of the first quarter, but then that second quarter really damned them because they lost the second quarter by 18 points and they just couldn't come back from that. Uh, they tried to make a comeback, but just came up short. Padres money line was a winner. They went 6-3 over the Brewers. Lost the first five money line with the Astros at plus one of two. Uh, the Cubs game was on crack last night. Team total over four and a half was a winner, but the uh, money line was a loser in that game there. Oakland first five. Another team I'm glad I got out uh, first five and, and, and didn't play the full game because they ended up losing the full game 3-2. Uh, which they end up giving up those two runs in the sixth inning. So that I got out just in time in that game. Sacramento Kings knocking out them Road Warriors. Uh, so uh, the Golden State Warriors are eliminated from the playoffs. They're the first team 
um, eliminated during the NBA postseason here and then lost on the double up at the end of the night with the Nationals' first five in full game. They were down 3 nothing, and then it was all she wrote. So, uh, But overall, a two-unit day. Any day in the black is a good day. So we'll head over to the chat, and then we will get into today's hockey card, and then we will get into today's baseball. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Flyers eliminated three teams with one goal. There you go. Tampa in seven. I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna. I, I'm on the Panthers. I, I think the Panthers win that series. I get it. Tampa's playing good. It's Tampa in the playoffs, and. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm riding out. I, I don't think I'm betting the series future in that one. I'll probably look to bet it game by game, but yeah. Bruins in seven. I, I, I agree with this. I will be betting the Bruins to beat the Maple Leafs in the first round of the playoffs. I can promise you that one. It is just my annual tradition of fading the Leafs in the playoffs. That's all it is. What's Cash Twins? What's good? Moneyline Mills. Morning, Nick. What's good? Untouchable. Capitals got in, uh, was be uh, yeah, I got, got in beautiful caps in the under, never in doubt. Cash the plus 575, make the playoffs future. Beautiful, there you go. Rangers in five, yeah, I, I kind of see the Rangers probably. I, I see, I think the game I'm most interested in the Capitals is game three when they're down two nothing, heading back to Washington. Uh, so. That's kind of where I'm thinking with them. Um, Caps in six. Tim saying the Rangers go down in the first round. I, I would say if the Caps win, it's in seven. If the Caps win, it's in seven. If the Rangers win, it's in five or six. Got another draw from the Canadians. Shame on them for choking again. It was so frustrating watching them choke again. Three seconds left. Are you kidding me? Leafs in six. Um, no. 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 Lingren Bull Capitals in six with a lot of unders fade the president's trophy team. I do think unders could be really good in that capital series. I really do. Bruins in seven. Leafs will be up 3-1 and choke the series as usual. Yeah, if the Leafs win game one, bet the Bruins. If the Leafs go up 2-0, bet the Bruins. If the Leafs go up 3-1, if they go up 2-1, if, they, if they're up in the series, bet the Bruins. The Bruins are winning the series. Uh, baseball is so much harder to predict. I disagree. Um, so far in, I, I need to let's 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 take a look here. Leagues, MLB, um, date range since the open at the start of the season, which was March twentieth for baseball. I am up nineteen point six four units. I, I I think I think baseball has been really good so far. Uh, we will be getting into some baseball there. Warriors out. What a shame. Yeah. Next is knockout. Uh, next is knockout. Then mile Denver Nuggies. Nuggies in four. Nuggets sweep the Lakers again. I'll be on in 15. What? All right. I uh, got that nice Caps Orioles. Parlay plus 228 and plus 490 with the Orioles run line. There you go. Yes, sir. What's good, Justin? Stacks pot, Judge RBI plus 118. Let's get into some hockey. Um, this game is completely meaningless. Uh, I believe only one game has any remote type of playoff implications, which we'll get into. Um, we'll cut we'll start off here with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the Toronto and the um, Tampa Bay Lightning. This le this game means absolutely nothing. We found out who these two teams are playing um, in the playoffs after tonight. The Tampa Bay Lightning will be packing their bags and heading to Sunrise to take on the Florida Panthers, and the Toronto Maple Leafs would be packing their bags and handing up to TD Garden to take on the Boston Bruins. Um, this game means absolutely nothing. It would not surprise me to see them go with Martin Jones in net the Maple Leafs tonight. It would not surprise me to see them go with Sam Sonoff or Wool. I think Sam Sonoff might be your game one starter with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And please don't be surprised if it's Michael Tompkins uh, for the Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning in this game. Uh, let's get up the line of history in this one here. 
and I kind of want to take a look what these lineups are, see if they're resting anybody. Um, Cause I think that's, this is something we have to look at today is uh, are any players resting? And the thing is with Toronto, they can't rest anybody because they don't have the salary cap to br- call up players. Uh, let's take a look here at uh, the uh, potential Tampa Bay Lightning starting lineup. I want to see. I, I want to see if they're going to be starting Topkins today. I truly do. Uh, looks like Duclair, Point, Kucherov, Hagel, Sorelli, Stamkos, Esamon, Paul, Shafley. Do they have any players resting tonight is the question. Um, no, no, it doesn't look like they have anybody. They haven't announced anyone at least. I think this is going to be Michael Tompkins. Uh, Matt Tompkins, my bad. Matt Tompkins, not Michael Tompkins, uh, in net for the Tampa Bay Lightning tonight. And if that's the case, and I think regardless of who it is, I think this is one of those games where they roll out the puck and they say, hey, no defense tonight. I think this is a game where we can easily see this be a 5-4 type of game. Players don't want to be blocking shots in a meaningless last regular season game. When you have the playoffs on deck, you're not playing each other. This could be a second-round matchup if the Maple Leafs make it past the Bruins and the Lightning make it past the uh, Panthers. I think it'll be opposite. I think it'll be Panthers and Bruins uh, again. Uh, But uh, this game is over or nothing for me, I think. Uh, And when you look at these two teams – it's got to be Tampa Bay or nothing, right? Maybe they step up around Matt Tompkins if they start Tompkins in this game. This is a, just a tricky – it's a tricky last two days, and that's something we have to keep in mind. That's why I almost didn't even put my spreadsheet together because I know that this this is a uh, – this is going to be a day where I don't think any, uh, any like my spreadsheets matter or anything along those lines. Uh, so I might move on this over. Because I think this could be a defense optional playing for exercise, getting ready for the playoffs type of game. I do not see any playoff intensity in this matchup. I see maybe 10 to 12 minutes from the top line for Saint, uh, for Toronto. And that's about it. Probably a lot of fourth line stuff, which could mean to a little bit more of an under. So this is a no play for me in this game at the moment. It's over or nothing, I think. Let's see. Hello, uh, no sweep. We'll, we'll see. Uh, good morning, Sunshine. Good morning, Real Deal Prime. Lindy Ruff to Buffalo. I don't, Lane Lambert to Buffalo. There you go. Um, Martin Jones for the Leafs. I could definitely see Martin Jones go, uh, in goal. Matthews goal, Byers 154. And if, it, and if they tell me it's Martin Jones and Matt Tompkins, I will be betting the over. That's the way I'll approach this game. Over 6 minus 114. Is it really a 6? That tells me they're probably resting starters. Uh, let's take a look. Is this really a six? I'm seeing six and a half across the board. I see six and a half across the board. So yeah. If I sprinkle Matthews two goals, I could definitely see that. Matthews anytime goal. Um, there as well. Yeah, I mean, it would be over or nothing. And I mean, obviously, look at you can look at incentives. You can look at things along those lines for players. 70 goals for Matthews, I think it's definitely worth a look. But, yeah, over and nothing for me. Over and Matthews, anytime goal, that's worth a look as well. Maybe you can – what if you what if you t- uh, what if you did Matthews' goal with over five and a half goals? There you go. We'll move on. And this is beautiful to say this game means absolutely nothing. And I love it. The New York Islanders and the Pittsburgh Penguins – Minus 130 for the Penguins with a total of six in this game. I'm assuming this line is will move as well. Uh, it has a couple of cents. Line open up at a 121. It's up to a 128. Line open up at a five and a half, up to a six now in this game here. I'm thinking it's Yari and, and Sorokin is probable for this game. Um, and we've already got some news for this game that I mean, it tells me that the Islanders are probably punting this game. We're not probably that they are. Uh, Matthew Barzell, Pierre Engvall, and Hudson Fashing are all not playing. They will be replaced in the lineup by Oliver Wallstrom, Simon Holstrom, and Samuel Bolduc. Um, and they'll be running uh, Sezikis, Wallstrom, Hol- uh, Horvat, 
Nelson Palmieri, Holstrom, Lee Pasho, Clutterbuck, Martin McLean, and running seven defensemen with Romanov, Bolduc, Pelic Pollock, Riley Aho, and Bertuzzo uh, with Sorokin starting. Um, and this lineup tells me that the, the Penguins are probably the play in this game. But on the flip side, this game is completely meaningless. Uh, the Islanders, they're in the three seed. They know they're heading down to Raleigh um, on Sunday to take on the Hurricanes. And a beautiful, beautiful thing for the, the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. With the Capitals' win last night, they are eliminated. They will miss the playoffs for the second consecutive year. And they have a 0% chance of winning the draft lottery. So no playoffs, no Celebrini for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Love it. Love to see it. Um, this is another game I really don't have any betting interest in. I probably won't watch it. Um, it's another one where it's probably over or nothing because this is two teams with nothing to play for. The Islanders, uh, they are going to be uh, – uh, they're playing on Sunday in, the, in game one. Uh, Penguins are probably scheduling their tee times as we speak. Uh, so uh, this is a game where maybe you see Crosby and company step up in their last game. But um, this is no play for me. It's Penguins or nothing, but it's no play. There we go. Tim, they finally fired their head coach. Shame there's no more Sabres Day this season. Yeah. Um. Pens minus one and a half plus one ninety five. The game's on Saturday. I I thought I saw Sunday. I saw I saw a post that it was on Sunday. The playoffs start on Saturday. The Islanders start on Sunday. Um, I want to find. Um, I think it was her that posted it. Uh, the, the scheduling here. Um, there we go. Eastern Conference is set. Here's what I oh what I believe the windows will be for the series. Uh, I don't know. I I, I think it'll be on Sunday because I think Lightning, Panthers, Maple Leafs, Bruins will be on. Saturday. We don't know yet though. We don't know yet. Uh, amazing how the uh, the Angels lose games up three one top two outs bottom nine and no one on and they ra- and allow the Rays to tie it then three times in extra innings they were down uh, they were one out away from winning and still lost yep uh, bunting goal he always has a pro- point to prove probably drawing the over yeah I can see it. Uh, that long rest is going to affect some teams differently. Well, the Islanders won't have as long of a rest as the Hurricanes will because the Hurricanes played their last game of the regular season yesterday against the Columbus Blue Jackets. So, uh, yeah, the Islanders will be at, they'll have one less day of rest or maybe one less day of rust. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll get into the next matchup here, the St. Louis Blues and the Dallas Stars. The Stars minus 210 favorites, total of six in this game. Now, this game is the only one with any remote type of playoff significance to it here, uh, where we have the Dallas Stars with a point are the number one seed in the West. They have not clinched that yet. With a loss in regulation and a Canucks win in regulation tomorrow against Winnipeg, the Canucks will have the number one seed in the West. So um, this is a it's a game where if you are the stars, get a point, get one singular point, and you get the and you get the number one seed. You get home ice advantage throughout the entire playoffs. Um, so. That is what is to play for if you're the Dallas Stars in this game. For the St. Louis Blues, your season's over. It's, you're, you've been eliminated a, little, a few games ago. And, um, and um, for me, this is probably Dallas minus one or nothing. Um, but this is another game where I looked at this card today and I see one spot, one spot only, and that's all I want to ride with. Um, for mm-hmm. today in the NHL. Um, and I see no no need to bet the other games because I think the edge on the one game that I did bet is so significant that I think that this is, 
the best bet on the board coming up in the next game. And I see no value in betting any of these other games. Uh, uh, a, a, I'm not betting any uh, hockey. Uh, for This is the last game of the regular season, correct? Tomorrow. Who plays tomorrow? Um, six teams play tomorrow. Okay. Six, six games tomorrow. And they have no significance. No significance whatsoever. Right. Uh, no, wrong, wrong, wrong. Um, with a win against Anaheim, Vegas will get the Pacific three spot. All right, that's why there's only five series out, lines out, um, which I started looking at the Eastern Conference. Um, Toronto, plus 105. No. Lightning, plus 150. Um, no. Capitals. Okay. I will, I would like to see that. Um, Islanders, plus one and a half is plus 130. I think that one could be a little bit scrappy. I do think the Canes win that series, but um, – and then maybe look towards Colorado minus one and a half at plus one forty. Because I love Colorado in that series. Um, or you could do uh, no, the uh, under five. No, not under five games. Um, you can do. I think there's gonna be a bunch Colorado of Colorado minus there. one, even there. And that's something I might do with some of these favorites is take the minus one line. So if they win in seven, I push. If they win in six, I win. Type of thing. Get the juice down. I got back, in, back to the chat there. Oh, uh, where did you leave off? Read for a second. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Uh, usually the blues and the under for me. Well, good luck to you. Uh, how about the Padres getting it done last night? May ride the Brewers, uh, depending on who's pitching for them. I believe it's uh, Freddie Peralta today. It, it's TBD at the moment, but I believe it's Freddie Peralta. Tim, uh, what's up? Uh, untouchable. Blues money line, uh, they're live here. Uh, considering they're, I mean, the Stars just need to get a point. Maybe overtime. Maybe a draw. A draw. A draw in that game. Absolutely. Who is Albert Suarez? He's going to be the starting pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles today. The last time he pitched in the major leagues, 2017. Oh, boy. That being said, Baltimore. Um, we ride the Coyotes one more time. Cue the we'll Coyotes. Get, we'll get into that next game. We'll get that into in a minute. Uh, this guy sounds autistic. Thank you. Thank I, you I, I I think I am, so I appreciate it, man. Um, also, these are uh, these desert dogs uh, to score uh, Doan, Keller, and Macarelli. Yeah. Welcome home, Lindy. Don't get my hopes up for next year. I'm already depressed about this year and the failure that it was. All right, let's head to the last one. Where uh, you get the Edmonton Oilers taking on the Utah – um, Utah Coyotes. They're, Salt Lake City Coyotes. It, it, and uh, and I'll, Salt I'll Lake City it. Yetis. Yeah, it's gonna be Salt Lake City. It will not be the Coyotes. I will promise you that one. There. Let's get into it here. This is the singular best bet on the hockey board today. Um, this is the this is the best bet for hockey today, and it's the Arizona Coyotes at plus one seventy. And hear me out on this one here. It's one last ride. Now. Uh, when you look at the playoff implications for this game, it means absolutely nothing. This game means nothing to the Edmonton Oilers. They're locked up in the two seed. They don't know who they'll play yet. With the Vegas win in the first, against the Anaheim Ducks, the Vegas Golden Knights would get the uh, the uh, Edmonton Oilers. Uh, if the Ducks beat the Golden Knights, the Oilers, for the third straight year in a row, will play the Kings in the first round. I don't know about you, but I think the Oilers will be big Ducks fans uh, come tomorrow night. Because I would rather play the Kings than the Golden Knights in the first round of the playoffs. That's just me, though. Yeah. So this game means absolutely nothing to the Edmonton Oilers. With the uh, Vancouver Canucks last night getting the 4-1 win over Calgary, which I'm pissed I didn't grab Vancouver minus one like I wanted to last night. Um, the Pacific Division is the Canucks. Um, so this means nothing to the Edmonton Oilers on the flip side, even though the Arizona Coyotes have been eliminated from the playoffs, this game means everything to them. This is the last game in Arizona. Now it's the, let me, let me preface this. It's one last ride for about five years because in, in the negotiations with moving the team to Salt Lake city, 
the next expansion franchise will go to Arizona and it will be the Coyotes in about five years. And they will be an expansion team in about five years. So it's not the end of the Arizona Coyotes. It's the end of this edition of the Arizona Coyotes. This is very similar to what happened to Winnipeg when when the Winnipeg Jets became the Atlanta Thrashers and then they gave the Winnipeg Jets another team. Um, Or when they took away the, the North Stars from Minnesota and then they gave them the Wild. This is going to be very similar to that where they're taking away the Coyotes and they're going to give them back the Coyotes in about five years because Gary Bettman can't admit when he's wrong. That's why he wants to still put a team in Atlanta again and wants to go back to Arizona. That being said, Arizona wins this game. Arizona wins this game. And I think this is the best bet on the board is for Arizona at around plus 170. Um, One last ride with the Coyotes against the Oilers here. Uh, are they related? Yes, we're related. Arizona. Okay. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I also sprinkled Yotes minus one and a half plus 315. Go for it. Over six and a half, I, I think the Oilers get some goals too. Oh, uh, yeah. They're Oilers. not going to shut out the uh, Oilers. Let's um, head to baseball, Nick. And I'll uh, put it up on the site. Let's get into it here. Huh? I'll, I'll, I'll put it on yeah, the outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, San Francisco Giants and, this, and the Miami Marlins. The Mar- uh, Marlins are favorites in this game. What are we doing? A uh, total of eight and a half in this spot. Let's get into the line history in this game here where we have uh, – let's take a look here where we have – I'm trying to get this to load. There we go. Um, this line on Bet Online opened up with the Miami Marlins as minus or at plus 105 range, and it's now minus 113 for the Miami Marlins. So we've gone from dog to favorite here with the Miami Marlins. Line opened up in an eight and a half, minus 115. It's down to an eight and a half, minus 111. Uh, so we've had a move towards the under, we've had a move towards the Marlins. 76% of the tickets, 92% of the cash is on the Giants in line moving towards the Marlins, which in normal circumstances would uh, probably put me on the Marlins. Um, but this is not normal circumstances. And I, I really need to have conviction to go up against market moves like this. Absolutely have to. I've been fading the Marlins every game of the season, and I ain't going to stop now. Uh, the Miami Marlins won yesterday. Uh, so they're looking uh, to have their longest win streak of this young season so far, which is two. If they can win this game, they'll they'll have their longest win streak of the year. We have uh, Keaton Wynn versus Trevor Rogers in this matchup here. Uh, we have uh, Wynn, who gave up two and runs on five hits, three walks, six strikeouts, and five innings pitch. Good start last game and a 2-1 loss against the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, they lost 4 nothing to the Padres. He gave up four and runs on three hits, three walks, one strikeout, six innings pitch. He gave up three and runs, four hits, one walk, six strikeouts, and five innings against the Dodgers as well. Trevor Rogers, this will be his fourth appearance um, where he's looked okay so far this year. His last two starts have been better, even though he got the loss in both of them. That's because his team gave him a combined two runs of run support the last two games. Um, he's gone 15 innings this year. He's given up eight earned runs on 20 hits and eight walks, and he's struck out 14 batters against the Braves against in St. Louis and uh, against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And this is pretty plain and simple for me. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We haven't lost two in a row yet this year. Um, I'm on the Giants' money line. This game starts in about an hour. Let's get our day started off with fading the Marlins. Uh, Thirteen and five so far, fading the Marlins this year. So, um, and I know their record is four and fourteen. One of the games, uh, the Yankees won, but didn't cover the run line. Um, and we're we're up like what ten units, fading them this year. So if we lose one, fine. If we lose two, fine. If you've been betting it the entire year with us, we're up big. So we're gonna keep doing it until it's uh until it's not profitable anymore. Um, which I don't think that's going to happen this year. I think the Marlins are going to lose a lot more than they're going to win. 
And I'm glad there's kind of a trend that me and Nick both agree on that there's something that we can have up on the site every single day. Because, I, I mean, in the beginning of the year, Nick, we should have agreed that three plays every single day would be fading the Dodgers, back in the Orioles, and fading the Marlins. So we could have all three of well, our we systems didn't, we didn't, on the- we didn't, We didn't align with the Dodgers and the Orioles, so. I would have I would have I would have worked with your Dodgers if you worked with my Orioles, but that's 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 uh that's beyond the point. Uh, maybe next year. Um, but uh, yeah, let's continue to fade the fade the Marlins every single day. Plus one hundred two, I got with the Giants money line. Who's yeah, gonna hit better saw- today? That's all that matters. Yeah. yeah, Giants money line. Yes. Oh my God, Giants killed me bad yesterday. Uh, value over twelve and a half pro. Giants money line. A oh, valid shooting is over. And one unit. Ah, damn, that sucks. And then an eight pick that was Giants as well. Ten. To, that's that's rough. It's gonna be 10 a.m. local time for the Giants. Does that matter? No. No. Um, considering that, where did they just play their last series? Where were the Giants last? Tampa. Tampa. Yeah, no, they've been on the East Coast. So no, I'm not I'm not worried about this one. Uh, granted, guys, keep in mind this is a getaway day for a lot of teams. We'll keep that one in mind. Can't believe the Marlins ruined my eight team lotto yesterday. It, hey, it, they're not going to lose every single game, but we're going to fade them every single game. ESPN bet says Giants minus 135. The Brewers could not hit that pitcher at all last night. No, they could not. Over in the Giants game. I don't want to do anything with the I don't want any, to do anything with the Marlins offense. I don't think it's good. So I'm gonna stay off of that. <laughs> Nick, I've already made my tweet for today. Yeah, guys, uh, I'm just putting out my post for the noon game because uh, by the time we're done breaking all these games down, this game will probably start. Uh, Here, so uh, real, real quick, there's uh, Miami first five, no. And what is a getaway day? A getaway day meaning there's an off day tomorrow. Uh, this is the last game in a, in a road trip for our team. And then they get to go home afterwards. Um, so I believe the Giants have off tomorrow. No, they don't have. Okay, here's a spot for tomorrow. Arizona money line against San Fran. San Fran after a long East Coast road trip. And then they play Arizona right right away tomorrow. No days off. So there's only five games tomorrow. Yeah, I saw that. Anyways, uh, to this one, Nick. Yep. Um uh, Let's get into it here. Yeah, I just wanted to put out that – I wanted to put out the post or whatever for, for the noon game because I know but when we're breaking all these games down, uh, by the time I'll post the next one, it will be past the 12 to 10 uh, start time. Yep. So we'll probably have an opportunity to live bet uh, these games – or this game if uh, if it if it goes south early. Uh, let's get into it here. Hopefully it doesn't, though. Minnesota Twins and the Baltimore Orioles. We have the – uh, twins around minus 110 favorites in this game. So we have the Orioles as home dogs in this spot with yeah, a total at of eight and a half. Yep. Uh, I, 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 I'm aware of them. Uh, okay. Line opened up at an eight at minus 115. It's now an eight at minus 125. So we've got a slight move towards the over. Uh, this line did open up at 240 yesterday, actually at eight and a half. But it, when it reopened up at 950 this morning, or it looked, yeah, it's an eight. The line opened up at a at even money for the Twins. It's now at minus one hundred five for the Twins. So we've had a five cent line movement towards Minnesota as well. Uh, we have seventy one percent of the tickets and eighty two percent of the cash is on the Orioles, with the line moving towards the Twins in this game here. And right off the rip, I'm very interested in Minnesota. And I know Tim, you're like, I know you're going to be on the Orioles. I don't think this is a good spot for the Orioles, um, personally. Let's let's get into it here. We have Pablo Lopez um, on the mound here. Uh, this is his fourth start of the year. His last two have not been very good. This last one though was in Detroit, where he gave up five earned runs on six hits, three walks, seven strikeouts, and four innings pitched against the Tigers. He gave up three earned runs on six hits, one walk, five and two thirds, and two strikeouts against the uh, Guardians. He had a really good first start though against the Royals. On the flip side, on covers it says TBD. I would like. You to go over the starting pitcher that we should be expecting in this uh, Baltimore game because I am very interested to hear about this guy. And if he doesn't really wow me, it's going to be twins for me. 
Well, he's not going to wow you because you don't like pitchers that haven't pitched in the majors in a while. Last time he made an appearance in the major leagues was with the San Francisco Giants in 2017. Um, He was, I will say, a first-round pick, 14th overall to the Diamondbacks. That being said, that was a, that was a while ago. He made his debut in 2016. Um, but he did have potential coming up. Obviously, I don't know what the, what his deal was, why he uh, – looks like he played uh, elected free agency, signed with Leonis Del Carcaius, um, which I guess is a – I want to say Mexican league. Um, and he was playing down there for a while. So he, I guess he's still been playing, but not in the United States. Um, you know, you, I already put it in the chat. It's Orioles money line every single day. Orioles run line every single day. If you've backed it so far this year, Orioles money line is 11 and six up 2.75 units. So hundred dollar betters, you're up 275 thousand dollar betters. You're up 2,700 bucks run line betters. 10 and 7, up 5.8 units. $100 betters, up 580. $1,000 betters, up 5,800 bucks. So um, this Orioles team is starting to do exactly what I expected them to do. I'm not expecting to win every single game. I am not. That's not the case of this point experiment. It's that it's going to be profitable at the end. So could the Twins win today? Yes. But bad spot, good spot, Sunday night fate, it does not matter. I'm doing the experiment like you are doing with the Dodgers. Orioles every single day. By the way, are you keeping track of your Dodger fade on Twitter? I kind of what I'm doing. Uh, I updated every like couple games or so. I don't okay. post every single day about it, but I updated every few days. Yeah, I, I've, I've been posting every single day about mine. So um, if you guys want all the numbers behind it, I put the link right here. Um, and it's already, I already retweeted it. This is the 35th time today that I retweeted that post. Um, so. Uh, and I'm going to keep retweeting that post every single game because it's day 18 of 162. Pass. This guy's played 12 seasons in the minors. Yeah. Um, it was a pitcher. Uh, if I was a pitcher, I would want to play for the Twins. Uh, you would want to play the Twins. Yeah, because they don't hit. Uh, of course, usual Marlins Nerfy. Sure. I was thinking Twins first five. Uh, twins first five Orioles live bet if the twins are up. Twins money line, even though I don't like it. I feel like everybody's gonna like the twins today. I know your number, your ticket numbers say a lot of things. I think a lot of people are gonna look at it, see a guy that hasn't pitched in the majors since 2017, see a pick and price against him and go after it. So see, I, I see I I I can also see the opposite side where people are like, ooh, Orioles, dog. I would say yes, but at the same time, the Twins are – wow, actually, the Twins are bad this year. Ten and, Twins uh, six and ten. not that good of a baseball team this year. Uh, my big worry is, is everybody goes and looks at – because you got to look at the starting pitchers. But uh, good morning, guys. Good morning, Dad. How are you doing today? Uh, we'll send you the plays in a little bit. Oh, Dad, early game. Uh, Giants and Marlins. Take the Giants. Um, we're, we're continuing the fade to Marlins. Um, that's the first play, and then we'll get you the rest of them later. Um, Nerfie will be for Toronto, Mets, Texas, and Seattle. Okay. These teams are going for sweeps today. Or uh, Orioles, Phillies, Mariners, Cardinals. What about the Mets? Mets are going for a sweep. Forgot about them? What about the Padres? Padres are going for a sweep. Uh, Braves are going for a sweep. Royals are going for a sweep. Uh, St. Louis is – oh, you said Cardinals already. Uh, Arizona, no. Um, Seattle, yes. There you go. Uh, twins can't hit. Uh, what are we – yeah, Twins cannot hit. I agree. Lopez is good. Really good. Joe Ryan. I'm not saying that – I'm not saying that Pablo Lopez is bad. I mean, he's going to be one of the top pitchers in baseball this year. But um, let's get that money. Let's do it. No no Lopez revenge spot because it's not the Lopez that pitched for 
for Baltimore. Yeah, that's Jorge Lopez, not Pablo Lopez. That's the one that's on the Mets. Uh, Pablo Lopez, the one that's pitching today, was on the Marlins. But uh, let's uh, let's jump to this game, Nick, which I do like. Yeah, by the way, I took the Minnesota Twins minus 110 uh, over on Fanatics for this game here. So, Okay. There we go. All right. Let's move on. The Pittsburgh Pirates and the New York Mets. The Mets minus 135 favorites. Total eight in this game. Uh, we have Bailey Falter and paid, uh, Luis Severino. This line's – wow, this guy, this line's skyrocketed. Uh, we have – this line opened up at a 132. This morning it was a 135. Now we're staring at Mets minus 155. Uh, so we've had a big move towards the New York Mets. Line opened up at an 8.5. It's down to an 8. So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a move towards the Mets in this game here. We have 87% of the tickets, 99% of the cash on the Mets, which explains about the 23 cent line movement towards the New York Metropolitans in this one here. 80% of the tickets are on the under, 10,506 tickets in. Uh, taking a look at the pitching matchup here, Bailey Falter and Luis Severino, uh, where this is uh, Falter's third appearance after getting beat up against the Marlins in his first start, where he gave up six earned runs on five hits, three walks, two strikeouts, and four innings pitched. He's looked good this last his next two, and it was against a good Phillies lineup and a good Orioles lineup. No one runs on one hit, one walk, one strikeout in six innings pitch and a 5-4 win over the Baltimore Orioles. One earned run on four hits, no walks, three strikeouts, and five innings pitched against the Philadelphia Phillies. So he's looked really good in his last two starts. On the opposite side, Luis Severino uh, for the Mets here has looked pretty good this season. He has back-to-back one-run outings where he gave up one earned run on three hits, two walks, five, uh, seven strikeouts, and five innings pitched against the Reds. He gave up one earned run on one hit, four walks, four strikeouts, and five innings pitched against a red-hot Royals team coming into that game in that 6-1 win. Uh, so he's looked good since giving up three earned runs on 11 hits against the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, I have no interest in this game, though. Uh, this line, if you wanted the Mets, you've missed your line because now they're all the way up to minus 155. Um, and Or, my bad, you would have to minus one line them. Uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, this is a no play for me. I think the line's too wide now, um, but I do not want to be backing the Pirates in this game and by, backing Bailey Falter have a third, uh, third uh, really good start in a row. Uh, so it's a pass for me. I'm on the Mets' run line. Um it didn't matter. The line, I don't think it's gotten too wide. And the only reason why is it going from minus 135 to minus 155. I was going to take the run line regardless. So it's not like I have to lay runs because I wasn't going to in the beginning. I was already going to lay the run line at minus 135 um, five, when they were minus 135 on the money line to get a, what it would have been, a plus 160 run line. Instead, I'm getting a plus 145. I don't really think there's much different there. It's still plus money. And this is a Mets team that since their 0-5 start has gone 9-3. And three, and the they they just look like a whole other team. They're hitting besides Nimmo. Nimmo needs to get going. Um, and Lindor still. But this team is starting to hit better. And their pitching is the best in the National League. And it's getting close. Well, um, it's uh, Kansas City's is still best – uh, overall ERA in baseball. Uh, Mets are still number one in the National League. Five teams ahead of them, all in the American League. Kansas City, Boston, Detroit, New York, and Cleveland. Um, but this Mets team is doing it with pitching, which I know a lot of people didn't expect the Mets to have pitching this year. Pitching looks fine. I'm um, taking the run, Mets run line. Let's get the sweep. There you go. That's money line. It's, it's got to be a run line at this point. Need a Rangers and Orioles to hit a 79-50. Get it. Um, Nerfy on the Mets. Sure. Don't want to mention the Mets or fraud race. Why? Uh, not trying to luck, not trying to try my luck in those series. Fair. Pirates look uh, looking like some money. Um, no, ECU played last night. Um, we're not looking at those pirates. And uh, we're not looking at these pirates either. Um, lean Mets, you got the Mets at minus 135. Great number. Uh, pass on the Atlanta Houston series two. No need to get involved now. I know you were just mentioning the teams that were going for sweep, so I forgot I had the other teams in. Um, so parlay the Mets. I, you could use that as a parlay piece. As soon as the show started, the Giants' money line spread jumped to minus 110. Someone is listening. 
the books are listening to us. All right, smash yeah, the good. Pirates. All right, uh, now let's get the Mets at a better line. <laughs> Kidding. Um, let's head up to the next game, Nick. Yeah, we have the uh, Detroit Tigers minus 140 favorites against the reigning World Series champion Texas Rangers with a total of 8.5 in this game. Let's take a look at the line history in this spot here between Detroit and um, – Texas in this game where we have this line opening up. If this will click, that'd be cool. There we go. Opening up at minus 130 for the Tigers. It's up to a 142 now. So we've had a move towards Detroit in this game. Those Motor City kitties in this one here. Line open up at a 7.5 minus 115. It's down to a 7.5 at even money, suggesting that we see these pitchers pitch well today. Let's see if the markets agree with these movements towards the Tigers and towards the under. 60% of the tickets are on the under. The lines move 15 cents towards the under. So that kind of makes sense there. 64% of the tickets and 88% of the cash is coming in on the Texas Rangers. The line's moving towards Detroit. Let's get into the pitching matchup here. Dane Dunning and Tariq Skubal. Dane Dunning is a pitcher that I would like to bet against this year. Um, He is now granted his first three starts. He's faced some pretty decent competition. The Rays, the Astros, and the Astros. So he's he's given up three earned runs in all three starts where he gave up. Yeah. So he's given up nine earned runs on 12 hits uh, in, if I can do math in my head, 18 innings pitched and 17 strikeouts. So he's been decent this year. He's about, he's about a little over a three ERA type of guy. On the flip side, we have Tariq Skubal, somebody that I liked as a little bit of a dark horse to win the Cy Young this year. Him and 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 uh, Cole Reagans were my top two to win the Cy Young. And other than his poor start against the Oakland Athletics, has looked borderline unhittable. No earned runs on three hits, two uh, no walks, six strikeouts against the Chicago White Sox. Granted, it was the Chicago White Sox. Uh, then he gave up four runs on four hits, two walks, nine strikeouts, and six and a third against the Athletics. And then followed that up with no runs on two hits, two walks, five strikeouts, and five innings pitch granted against the Minnesota Twins. So uh, he's faced the, he's dominated easy competition. This is definitely his toughest lineup that he's faced this year. But he's also at home in this spot, which I, I like him at home here. He's had this is his third straight home start, which I think can set him up for some really nice success in this game. And I think I'm going to go back to the well with the Detroit Tigers in this game. I was not on them yesterday. I was on the first five under yesterday, and that cashed rather easily. And uh, I would like to be on the Detroit Tigers to win the series here. Um, and uh, it would be a minus – I think it would be a minus one line for me. Uh, and it would be a – I think I think I would like to first five full game double up this spot with the Detroit Tigers uh, in this game. Uh, because the Tigers, I, I like the, the pitching advantage we have with Tariq Skubal over Dane Dunning. Yep. And I like the bullpen advantage we have with the Tigers bullpen over the Rangers bullpen. And I think this is enough of a, uh, everything correlating with the pet, the big, uh, with more bets, more tickets and more bets on the Rangers, the line moving towards the Tigers, the pitching advantage, the bullpen advantage, the third home start in a row for Tariq Skubal. I'm going to take the Tigers first five minus a half in full game money line. Uh, if I can get first five at minus 135 or lower, I will take I'll take the money line for the first five. Uh, so I'm going to shop around here and I'll find the best numbers. If I can get lower than minus 140, I'll just take the money lines on them. I just took the Tigers. Uh, I just took the Tigers run line and moved on. Um, this is a uh, I like Scooble as you mentioned. Uh, he's been great um, so far this year. M- minus is one bad start. Um, not trusting Dane Donning, and this is a this is a uh, Rangers team that I think you're going to see some heavy regression from. And when it comes to it, I wouldn't be surprised if they miss the playoffs. Um, it is still very crazy. early in the season, so I'm not trying to not trying to have any bold takes or anything all, all already. But um, this is a this is a Detroit Tigers spot for me, Nick. We're taking we're taking the run line. I got it at plus one sixty one. Yeah, over on Caesars, I'm seeing minus 135 money line. Uh, the first five money line is is juiced. Um, the best I can find for the first five money or first five money lines minus 150 on bet 365. So I'm going to take the minus a half 
over here on Bet MGM at minus 105. And then the full game money line is on Caesars at minus 135. I'm going to bet that as well. Right on. Um, let's head back to the chant. Um, the Rangers made some embarrassing errors yesterday. Good. Cool. Pass. Under. I like the under as well. Under. Oh, sorry. First five Tigers. Uh, under first five. I can see all of that. Uh, did that total drop uh, move to seven and a half or move up to eight and a half? Uh, um, it moved. Give me two seconds. Let me click on Let me go back to this game real quick for the line history. Uh, it's gone from a, a seven and a half minus 115 to a seven and a half mi- at even money on bet online. So it hasn't moved any runs. It's just moved 15 cents. There you go. Looks like. Uh, it looks like not. Uh, it's Wilson, not Peralta. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna stay away from that game then. We did, um, I didn't even type up the game because there was no line available. Good. Um, Rangers money line. I like the pl- uh, players made errors, got demoted, so players want uh, won't want to play. But no, it's not getting demoted. None of the none of the Rangers players are worried about losing their job. Let's be honest. I understand, Tim. Those were system plays. I'm on for today. I don't have to. Yeah, I know. I got you. You're good. Um, agree on the under three and a half in the first five. I could see that. Although that total does seem a little bit low. Um, I understand the total being that low, though. I can, I, can see, I can see two nothing Tigers. I double dipped on Royals Nerfy and both uh, and to win both games. I can get behind that. Uh, Bulls and 76ers today. 76ers, yes. Bowls. I didn't bet a side. I bet the total. I like the over. Scooby Doo. I'll take the Tigers minus one and a half full game. Me too. Never mind. I'm taking them first five. Okay. Um, Adolis Garcia is playing. He wasn't yesterday. Okay, great. Yeah. That's fine. I'm getting some plus money with it. So now this is a double header next. So we got to be careful with this one. Yeah, we have the Kansas City Royals. And the um, in the Chicago White Sox, the Royals minus 180 road favorites with a total of eight and a half in this game. Let's take a look at the line history in this spot here. This is once again Jonathan Cannon and Brady Singer. Uh, so it's the same breakdown as yesterday when it comes to the pitching matchup and all that. Line open up in a 180, it's up to a 182 now. So we find a slight move towards the Royals. Line open up in an eight and a half minus 120. It's now an eight and a half and minus 125. So we've had a five cent line movement towards the over. We've had a slight move towards the Royals in this game here. Uh, taking a look at the cash flow on this one 95% of the tickets, 93% of the cash is on the Royals, 80% of the tickets, 99% of the cash on the over in this game here. And we broke this game down yesterday, and I'll give the same play I gave out yesterday for this game. Nothing. It's a pass for me. No interest in this spot at all. Um, I mean, the markets are moving in the right spot compared to where the money's coming in. But, I mean, I have absolutely no interest in this game. I'm going to tell you on that play. Yeah, we broke down this entire game yesterday. um, And it's just not a game that we're going to get to. So, um, good luck to anybody who is betting it. Plus, it's an AL Central matchup for me, which I don't really like to bet the AL Central versus AL Central. I'll never get them right. So, um, here to make money. I don't make money on those games. So, yeah, this one's a pass as well. Yep. Um, oop, can I click? Thank you. Uh, Kansas City Royals minus one and a half. Same play as yesterday. Royals run line. Uh, Singer is going to going for the revenge, or do the Sox have his number? I'm not entirely sure. You know, I, I don't think he had a good start against him this round. Any decent players making their NHL debut? Not that I know of. Not I would have to take a look. I feel like we would have seen something on Twitter about that. Yeah, also we don't I mean I mean the I uh, I was hoping we could have seen a uh, uh, prospect for the Islanders come up, either Matthew Maggio or uh is Rock or, or Karzov? Karzov, I believe. Islam Karzov uh, for the Islanders as well. That's prospects. Fair. Um I mean, yeah, he's a Russian, but yeah, I was hoping. But uh no. Uh but they instead they 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 promote or they they bring it. They when they sat Barzell, Engvall, and 
uh, fashing today, they brought up Holstrom, Wallstrom, and um, I'm drawing a blank on the last guy now that they brought up for today. But that is what it is. Uh, players that have already played with them, though. Head to uh, the next game here, Houston Astros and the Atlanta Braves, minus 140 for the Braves, total nine and a half in this game here. J.P. France and Max Fried Chicken, your pitching matchup here for this one. Uh, line opened up at a nine and a half at even money. It's a nine and a half at plus 105. So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a move towards uh, – damn it, I clicked off of it. Uh, we've had a three-cent line move towards the Atlanta Braves. Uh, let's take a look at the cash flow in this one here, where we have 40% of the tickets and 72% of the cash is coming in on the Astros with the line moving towards Atlanta. Uh, 67% of the tickets and 92% of the cash coming in on the over, and the line moving towards the under in this game here. Uh, JP France and uh, Max Freed, your pitching matchup here. Max Freed making his fourth appearance of the, of the year. Finally, had a good start in his last appearance. He only had to face the Miami Marlins to get that good start, but he finally got that good start in that 8-1 win. He gave up one earned run on four hits, one walk, four strikeouts, and six in the third innings pitched. Um, and then previous to that, he'd given up 10 earned runs and 12 hits, four walks, six strikeouts, and about five innings of work against the Diamondbacks and the Phillies. He's not looked good other than that Marlins start. And I think this lineup for the Astros is very similar to what he saw against the Phillies. Pretty reasonable to say. Um and when you look at this matchup here, uh, on the flip side, J.P. France uh, for this 6-13 and 13 Astros team. I can't believe they're this bad to start the year. They've lost all three of his starts. Back, he's pitched He's pitched against the Yankees, the Rangers, and the Rangers, and now against the Braves. If you look at the schedule that the Astros have played this year, it's been hell. It's been, I think, the toughest schedule in baseball. Uh, no. But um, well, that'd be the New York Mets. But anyways, okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, he's not looked particularly great, but he's had tough outings against tough teams. And this is another game I really don't have too much of an interest in. Um, I I would like to back the Astros at this nice plus price tag at home, but I just can't trust the Astros at the moment. Uh, so this is a it's a no play for me. I did this one as a free pick video last night. Um, I'm on the Braves run line. I got it at plus 105. Um, this is not a Astros team I trust right now uh, until they prove to me otherwise, to be honest. Um, and this is a Braves team that is just going to keep winning. Um, we've made the argument that the line was too close the first two games, and the Braves took care of business, no problem in both those games. Um, this is an Astros team that will be good throughout, that will be good at the end of the year. They'll be in the playoffs, they'll be fine. Um, they're just off to a really, really rough start, and um, I I need to see them start to win before I would want to back them. So this one is a stay away spot. I'm not really uh, too interested in going after. Uh, sorry, not interested in going after the Astros. I am on the Braves. I took them plus 105. I forgot about that. Well, I didn't okay. forget about it, but it, um, I'm on the I'm on the Braves. I did a free pick on video on last night. Little hockey news I just saw here. Um, one year, one more year of Mark Andre Fleury in Minnesota. He signs a one-year extension with Minnesota. Oh, Nick, I saw an interesting post that somebody was talking about possible, um, possible coaches for the Buffalo Sabers, and one person that they brought up was Rod Brindamore. If the Carolina Hurricanes don't extend him, which I think in order for Rod Brindamore really to get an extension. They need, they to, need to win the cup. Make it. You need you need to at least be competitive in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. Don't get swept again. Uh, taking Jimenez versus Singer. Braves run line. Fried chickens over strikeouts. Braves money line in a parlay. Sure. The Astros have more hits this season, but the Braves have way more runs. Hmm. It's the it's the pitching for the Astros that's been really concerning this year. It is, but it, it'll end up straightening itself out. So we're not don't, don't be don't be hung up on it. No, there will be value backing the Astros, and maybe this is a good buy low spot. It could be, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not buying it right now. 
Fair. Uh, we'll get into the next matchup then, uh, which is the New York Yankees taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. And this one here, Marcus Stroman, Kevin Gosman, your pitching matchup here. Line opened up with the Toronto Blue Jays round 106 favorites in this game. They got, they've been bouncing back and forth between dog and favorite, dog and favorite, dog and favorite. And we're seeing them around minus 112. So I moved towards Toronto. Line opened up at an eight and a half at plus 105. It's an eight and a half at minus 105 in this game here. So we've had a move towards the over. We've had a move towards the Blue Jays. This one here, 79% of the tickets, 66% of the cash is on the Yankees with the line moving slightly towards Toronto. 87% of the tickets, 97% of the cash is on the over in this game with the line moving towards the over as well. Uh, and I believe, if I, rem- if, I, if I remember right, this is, yep, um, this is, gonna, this is a, a, a pretty interesting game for the uh, Blue Jays. Uh, let's get into it, though. This will be Marcus Stroman's third appearance. Uh, of the season. Uh, he had a really nice first start against the uh, Astros where he gave up no run runs on four hits, two walks, four strikeouts, and six innings pitched. I wonder if he missed a start because he his next start after March 30th was April 10th where he gave up four runs on four hits, four walks, seven strikeouts, and five innings pitched against the Marlins in that 5-2 loss. On the other side, Kevin Gossman has been something has been confusing this year because his velocity is either right on or it's 10 miles an hour lower. Like, he, he's – and and the, the the crazy thing, Gosman said this, I believe, in interviews as well, is whether my my fastball is going to be 92 or 82, I don't know until I start pitching. Um, that's which is – that's very concerning if you're the Toronto Maple – or Toronto Maple – Toronto Blue Jays uh, with, with Gosman here. His last start was putrid. Six earned runs on 10 hits, no walks. No walks, at least it's not walking anybody. Four strikeouts and three and two thirds against the Colorado Rockies. Previous to that, he faced this Yankees team where he gave up five earned runs on four hits, two walks, no strikeouts, and one in a third inning pitch. He hasn't looked good all year, but yet the market's telling us that he that uh, that the Blue Jays win this game, and maybe it's because the Blue Jays score runs today because the market's moving towards the over. I can only look Blue Jays in this spot, uh, though, uh, with with the way the market's moving. And it's I think it's telling us that Kevin Gossman is worth backing today, which is terrifying. But I have interest in the Blue Jays. I have interest in the Blue Jays. I, I'm just – I'm not. Um, that is very concerning, his velocity numbers. But um, – to be, uh, I, I'm, I don't bet Blue Jays games to begin with, so I'm not even going to dive deeply into this one. Um, I, I keep, I mention the same thing every day with Blue Jay games. Um, I promised myself I wouldn't bet them unless I really had to. Well, they got no hit earlier in the year. I backed them the game afterwards because that's what you do. Um, other than that, I, it, the only other time I'll bet them, or sorry, bet against them, is against the Orioles. Or if there's another no hitter in a Blue Jays game, I'll back or fade depending on whether or not they threw it or whether or not they got thrown it. Um, so uh, that's the only real chance I have. Or if they fire a manager, which I don't see them doing. Um, so there's got to be a very specific reason for me to back them. There isn't today. Um, so this one is another pass. Let me see the number I'm getting here. Did we skip oh, Brewers game? Know. Yes, because there was no um, there's no pitcher for the Brewers. Um, pass, lean over in the Astro game, might lean over first five. I can see that too. Did you guys see Stan's home run so slow? I did not. Is the line moving to uh, to the over eight and a half? Uh, it was minus 120 last night. It's, and it's now crept it's, to the over. Yeah, it's it's crept to the over. Sorry, the under. He may want the under. It's moving towards the over. Moving towards the over. The Yankee, the numbers say Yankees money line, better pitching and hitting. Keep in mind, it's very, very early in the season, so don't take all those stats to heart. I'm, right, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on the game real quick. Uh, Toronto Blue Jays um, bet 365 um, uh, at minus 115 uh, for this matchup here. Uh, I kind of want to take a look at one more thing with this game. Just want to make sure that this is correct. Yeah, because – 
There is no way the Yankees get swept, right? <laughs> oh, Nick, I love it. I mean, it would be with the, the freaking Toronto Blue Jays, so it's no better. But, yeah, that's fine. Let's yeah. head to the next one, Nick, which I know you're going to be betting. Yes, I will. Uh, it won't be first five in full game, though, like the last two games, though. Um, but, yeah, let's get into it. The L.A. Dodgers and the Washington Nationals. Fortunately, Patrick Corbin Day let us down yesterday. It, uh, but It is what it is. It was a plus 242 money line. I'm not hung up on it. Yep. Uh, let's get into it here. The L.A. Dodgers and the uh, Washington Nationals. Jake Irving versus who? I have, TV, I have TBD. I'm seeing on one of the sites I use L. Knack. Who the hell is this Are guy? Are they making up pitcher names? Landon I, I don't Knack. know why we put the thing out. I don't. I don't. I haven't had a pitcher for the Dodgers yet. I'm seeing projected Landon Knack, which has pitched um, one game so far and or three games so far in the minors. This looks like a uh, bullpen game for the uh, LA Dodgers today. He was Landon Knack. Uh, he pitched. Here, with, I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, drafted by the LA Dodgers in the second round of the 2020 MLB June amateur draft out of East Tennessee State. ETSU. ETSU. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not really trusting in that. That's yeah. That's so, kinda... this is him making his MLB yeah. debut today. Yep. As a minus 240 favorite. This line opened up at a 255, it's down to a 240. So we've had a move towards the Nationals. Line open up a nine at minus 120. It's a nine and a half at plus uh, minus 102. We have 11% of the tickets and 81% of the cash on the Washington Nationals. 89% of the tickets are on the Nationals here in this game. Jake Irving versus Landon Knack. Obviously, we mentioned Landon Knack making his first, uh, is making his major league debut. Jake Irving coming in off of a really solid start in his last one. Six innings, gave up one earned run on one hit, two walks, five strikeouts, and six innings pitched. Let's ignore the fact that he faced the um, Oakland Athletics in that game. Um, previous to that, he faced the Phillies and the Reds and gave up a combined seven and runs on 12 hits, nine strikeouts, and 11 innings pitched on three walks. Um, I mean, you guys know where I'm going for this. I'm going to shop around, find the best number, fade the Dodgers. Um, Nationals money line for me. Yep, I'm going with you on this one. Uh, I don't bet. I don't do the whole fade the Dodger thing all that often. But when I'm getting a pitcher making a major league debut and I can get a plus two fifteen on the other side, yeah, um, I, I will be. I'll be on the Nationals with you. We just talked about Lennon Neck and everything with that. Um, this is. I, I. It could be a look ahead spot for the Dodgers as well. Um, you know who they have coming up, Nick? No, the New York Mets. Oh boy. Mets head to LA and then San Fran. Um oh, so I get to bet the Mets the next few games with uh with the Dodger fade. Yes, you do. Um this is this is a, a national spot. Let's let's ride with the nationals. Yep. I'm getting plus two ten on Fanatics, um, which I'm able to boost this. Uh so the boost won't be part of the actual thing, but I got I'm getting them at plus two thirty one with the boost on Fanatics because they're giving out a bunch of boosts for the, the playing games. Uh, my official play is plus 210, but I'm I'm getting plus 231 with the Nationals. Plus 215 Nationals. It's in. There you go. Um, uh, laughing at us. Yep, Knack, we're taking the Nationals plus one and a half. You can leave the runs at the door. Um, over nine and a half. DK is showing Bryce Wilson from Milwaukee. Hmm. Okay. That's good to know. I still don't have a line on that game. So, um, Max, we're probably not going to get to it. Um, to, we're probably not going to be betting that game anyway. Um, good luck to you if you bet it. Uh, by the way, if you guys want to be cool, like Max, he's got the, uh, logo next to his name. Um, you guys can become a member of the YouTube channel. So there you go. Yep. Well, Wilson. Um, 
Uh, we didn't get to dive deep into that one, so we're we're not going to try to BS it out of our ass because we actually trying to um, be prepared for it. So, all right, Nick, do we do it again? Uh, do you see who's pitching for the Oakland A's? So the answer is yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have the Oakland A's and the St. Louis Cardinals. This line opened up around minus 135. It's down to a 127, so we've had to move towards the – Oakland Athletics line opened up at an eight minus one ten. It's an eight minus one twelve. The Oakland A's have the pitching advantage in this game, Tim. Uh, but let's get into the line history in this spot where we have fifty percent of tickets and seventy seven percent of cast is coming on the Oakland A's with the line moving towards them. Eighty nine percent of tickets, eighty four percent of cash is coming on the under, and the lines moved a couple cents towards the over, which tells us maybe that these pitchers get hit a little bit. Steven Matz taking on Paul Blackburn for this one here. We have Steven Matz making his fourth appearance of the season, and he's looked relatively, he's looked really good to start the year. Uh, he runs in his three starts on 17 hits, three walks, uh, eight strikeouts, and uh, 15 innings pitched. So he's looked really good to start the year. On the flip side, Paul Blackburn has looked phenomenal to start the year. How about no earned runs and his first – um, 16 or 19 in the third innings pitched, uh, 11 hits, three walks, and 11 strikeouts for uh, Paul, Mr. Blackburn here. Happy Paul Blackburn Day for those who celebrate. I desperately want him to get traded out of Oakland because he deserves better. Oakland Athletics, first five money line, bet 365 plus 115. Yeah, I say no, you don't have to. Um, I, I'm I'm 100% uh. Um, I, I'm riding the way with you. I was on them the first two games. They cost me a $500 parlay the first game where it was to win 500 bucks. Um, and they, 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 they lost yesterday, but, um, I'm, I'm back on them today with Paul Blackburn because we back Paul Blackburn when he pitches. Um, he's been a, he's been a friend of the program for a while now. And yes, Nick, I would love to see him get traded. And would you be surprised if, at certain teams involved, um, if there's cer- if a certain team's competitive later on in the year, if uh, the team from Queens talks to Oakland about getting them, because that that seems See, like a that mm-hmm. seems like a David Stearns move to me. You know what? You know, you know what? We're gonna be begging for him to get traded, and then and once he gets traded, there's not gonna be any value on him. Yeah, because he's gonna be an Atlanta Brave. Oh God, please no. No, that makes sense though. Makes it sense. could be Spencer Strider's semi replacement. There's no replacing Spencer Strider, but um, no, yes, Oak- Oakland today. Um, before we get into a whole big conversation, uh, under and under first five also. Not going to take the unders on that. Let's keep riding, Nick. We got five more MLB games to talk about. Yeah, we have the Chicago Cubs and the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks minus one fifteen favorites. Total of nine in this game. This game was on crack last night, and I was really pissed to lose the Cubs money line last night because uh, they hit a grand slam to put them up 11-9. 11-8, 11-9. to nine. 11, eight, 11 to nine. And they end up losing in the 11th inning, 12-11. to t- 11. Uh, So that was incredibly, incredibly frustrating to lose that. We have Brandon Fad taking on Jordan Wicks in this matchup here. Line opened up at a plus one or minus 115. We are now seeing minus 119, so a slight move towards Arizona in this game here. Line open up at a 9 at 9.5 minus 115. It's now a 9 at minus 110. So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a slight move towards the Arizona Diamondbacks. We have a 99, 90, 88% of the tickets, 99% of the cash is on the over in this game, and the line's dropped in this spot. And then we have 94% of the tickets, 99% of the cash on the Diamondbacks, and the line moving towards Arizona in this spot. Wicks. And Fad, your pitching matchup here in this one. Wicks um, has looked uh, okay. He didn't have a good start his last one. Gave up four runs on five hits, four walks, six strikeouts, and four innings pitch against the um, Mariners. Previous to that, he started his season off facing the Rangers in Texas and the and the L.A. Dodgers, where he gave up four runs combined in those two starts on 11 hits, four walks, 13 strikeouts, and eight and two-thirds innings pitched. Um, so he's, he's had tough, he's had tough matchups in his first uh, few games. Brandon Fad on the other side 
Uh, did not look good in either of his last two starts. It's amazing what happens when you have to play a team that's not named the Colorado Rockies because he faced the Rockies in his first start, gave up one earned run on five hits, no walks, six strikeouts, and five innings pitched. After that, he faced the Braves and the Cardinals, where he gave up five earned runs on eight hits, one walk, seven strikeouts, and five and two thirds, and six earned runs on seven hits, two walks, four strikeouts, and six innings. Do we see a bounce back um, from this? And the market is screaming under in this game. Uh, we just see last night 12 11 baseball game and and we're seeing all this money all these tickets coming in on the over and the line moving towards the under tells me that we see these pitchers pitch well today especially after what happened last night an extra inning game um so this is a spot where i think the first five unders the look in this game and i can get a five in this game on ESPN bet, I'm kind of interested in this first five under. Um, real quick, I, I want to. I just want to put a little bit into, into perspective. You said last night's game was on crack. It was 12-11. Um, and I, I just want to point this out as um, as a why I enjoy watching college baseball more than I like watching MLB right now. Um, you said that game was on crack last night. There was plenty of fun games in college baseball. How about 17, 13 with Kentucky and Louisville? How about Arkansas coming back from being down seven to nothing? Um, we had Mercer outright beating Florida state. Uh, you had a back and forth game between Dalbap and Oklahoma state where Dalbap won eight to seven. Uh, not to mention like a 27 to four game for Utah, but, uh, and, and then you had the ECU game that went deep, uh, 13 innings where there was what is it, 14, 13. So a lot of on crack games for that as well. But, um, no, last night's game was crazy. We had the over, so it worked out nicely. Um, I can only lean under in this game just because of what we saw last night. I'm a, I'm a pro Brandon fat guy. I, I, I liked him last year. He made me money last year. Um, I think he could still make us money this year, and I, I do like him. Am I betting this game after last night? No, no, I want nothing to do with this game. Uh, kind of the same thing I've been doing the entire series because these are two teams that I really like betting, and when there's two teams that I really like, I don't want to fade one. And I feel like it would, wouldn't be say if I bet the Cubs, it wouldn't be me betting the Cubs. I feel like I would be fading the Arizona Diamondbacks, which I think both teams are going to be good this year. So, um. <laughs> I, I kind of stay off series besides totals. That's why I took the over in the last game. It'd be under or nothing in this one. I'm going to move on this first five under five. Uh, minus 125 on ESPN bet. Um, pass, D-backs. I'm, on, I'm on, back on Arizona. Uh, Arizona oh, sorry, Arkansas. Um, Arkansas is still not the number one team in my opinion. Um, Texas A&M. A&M has that title for – a while now um imagine mlb let's uh use his metal bats that'd be a lot of fun you would also see players like bryce harper um and like mike trout you would see, hitting you, you would 100, see, you would 100 see, home runs a game you would see just, 100 home run seasons yep just imagine ting oh okay that one's about 576 feet yeah, you if they use metal bats, totals would go just from off of pure velocity eight and a half to thirteen and a half every game. Just off of the pure velocity that pitchers are getting thrown at. I mean, we even see it in baseball, in college baseball, real quick. Because last night, a guy from Florida hit a five hundred and sixteen foot bomb over the scoreboard, opposite field with the metal bat. With the metal bat, yeah, but opposite field four five sixteen. That's freaking insane. But anyways, yep. um, I, I love college baseball. I'm actually going to go cap my college baseball for today. There you go. Uh, yeah, we'll move on, though, to the next matchup here, the Cincinnati Reds and the Seattle Mariners. We have the um, the Mariners as minus 125 favorites with a total of eight in this game here. Let's get into the line history in this spot. Find this matchup. Between uh, Bryce Miller and Andrew Abbott. Uh, we have 
this will click, that'd be cool. It will not. Cool. <laughs> there we go. Line open up at a 120. It's up to a 127 now. So we've had a move towards the Seattle Mariners. Line open up at an 8, minus 105. It's down to a 7.5, minus 105. So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a move towards the Mariners in this game here. 80% of the tickets, 97% of the cash on the Mariners. The line moving towards them. 60% of the tickets, 92% of the cash is on the under in this game with the line moving towards the under in this spot as well. Uh, we have Andrew Abbott and Bryce Miller. Uh, this is the uh, the fourth appearance for Miller so far this year. No, nope, uh, for Abbott this year, my bad. He's given up five earned runs on 14 hits, four walks, and 17 in the third innings pitch, and uh, he has 11 strikeouts. He faced the White Sox and the Phillies at uh, on the road, and he was at home against the Mets. On the flip side, we have Bryce Miller, who was coming in off of a, uh, a game against the Cubbies where he went, uh, gave up no one runs on three hits, three walks, four strikeouts, and six in the third innings pitched. Overall this year, he's pitched 18 in the third innings, has given up four earned runs on 12 hits and six walks. And um, math, well, 17 strikeouts. All four of his earned runs came in the 5-1 loss against the Boston Red Sox in his first start of the year. Since then, he's gone six, uh, 13 in the third innings the next two starts of shutout baseball. He's looked phenomenal. Um, and I would only look Mariners in this spot. I think there's value on the Mariners in this game. I'm interested in the Mariners in this game. The line's moving towards them. A little bit public. But with the pitching edge, I think that they're worth a shot here. I'm going to look towards the Seattle Mariners in this game. I want to see what type of number I can give with them now. You know, uh, you, you you know, I like uh, Bryce Miller. Um, oh I like God. a lot of players, a lot of pitchers on this staff. He, they, this this pitching staff for Seattle is going to be phenomenal this year. Yes. Um, and they just need the offense to show up in order to win games. What can I get for the money line for Seattle? One twenty seven. I'll take it. Or a plus 165 for a run line. I'm getting minus 130 on that 365. And the only reason why I'm taking the run line is I don't know if I trust Seattle to score enough. I think they win this game, but I could easily see being a 3-2 to two type of game. So um, that's why you take the money line. That's why I'm taking the money line here and not the okay, run Okay, you said run line. I was just making sure you're saying the right thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, I, I'm, I'm right on Seattle with you. Yep. All right, uh, back to the chat. Robert's liking the Reds. No, Nerfy and Marlins, money, Mariners money line. Yep, first five under as well. I can see an under in this game too. Uh, let's keep on moving on here. We have three more baseball games. Then we got two games in the association. Colorado Rockies and Philadelphia Phillies. We have the Phillies minus 220 favorites. Total of eight in this game. Let's take a look at the line history here between Christopher Sanchez and Ryan Feltner. Line open up minus 210. It's up to a 216 for Philadelphia. Line open up in an 8.5 minus 115. It's now an 8 at minus 105. So we've had a move towards the under, and we've had a move towards Philadelphia. Uh, let's take a look at the line history in this one. 89 or Cash flow, 89% of the tickets and 96% of the cash is on the Phillies. And we have 86% of the tickets and 97% of the cash is on the um, under with the line moving towards the under and the line moving towards the Phillies. And what we've seen with favorites of this size at home, they've actually had really good success, um, I believe. Uh, as, my bad. Public home favorites of this number actually do really well is what I've, what I've seen, what I've seen people track for a little, for a little over a year now uh, is that – Public home favorites of this number do really well. So this is uh, this is Phillies or nothing for me right off the rip. Christopher Sanchez taking on Ryan Feltner. Feltner uh, is this is his fourth appearance of the year. He's actually looked pretty good. He's gone a uh, he's gone 16 innings. He's given up six earned runs on 15 hits, six walks, 18 strikeouts uh, in those games uh, where he's faced the Blue Jays, the Rays, and the Diamondbacks. I think this is the toughest lineup he's faced so far, though, against this Philadelphia Phillies lineup here. Uh, the Phillies have Christopher Sanchez going. He, this is his third appearance. Uh, this is his fourth appearance. They've lost all three of his starts so far. 
He went six innings against the Pirates, four and a third against the Nationals, and he went five innings against the Reds. He's gone a total of so he's gone a total of 15 and a third innings pitched. He's given up six third runs on 15 hits, seven walks, uh, and he has gotten 15 strikeouts so far this year. For me, this is Philly's run line or nothing um, in this game. It's the only way I can look. Yes, the Phillies are fa- uh, public favorites in this spot, but home public public favorites actually do pretty well. Uh, so I would only look Philadelphia in this game. I don't know if there's enough value me to, for me to go after it. Um, just not really, um, not really anything I, I need to go after. I, I feel um, this has been a series. I don't want to say dominated by the Phillies, but the fact that the um, the Rockies have only scored one run this entire series is kind of, you know, about right because they've scored one run the last three games combined. How about an under? I can see an under in this game. My, my, my worry is that the Phillies put up eight. That's that maybe a Colorado team total under because they've been garbage. But yeah, is there anything I need to get involved in? No, I feel – what how many games do we have left? I, I feel like I've got enough – yeah, I'm not going to be on anything in the last couple of games. Um, but I feel like I have a good enough NBA card for today. Or, yeah. uh, sorry, MLB card for today. I'm seeing minus 105 for the run line on DraftKings. I would lean that way, but I don't yeah, like run lines. It, if I'm laying a run line on a home team, I want plus money for it. So that's just my thing. Or maybe one way to approach this as a double result is first five full game. It could be. For the, for the Phillies. I want to take a look what that would be. It won't be an official play for me, but a double result could be an interesting look. Um, could be, but I'm not. I'm not trying to really mess with that. Reds money line, nope. Um, Nerfy and the Mariners money line, yes, I like the Mariners first five under as well. I could see that. Um, Phillies run line in the Nerfy, good luck. Uh, no Royals doubleheader. No, we, uh, well, we talked about the game one. We never talked about game two because we don't know what um, we don't know what pitchers have been used uh, for game uh, in game one. So we feel like we can't really make the correct assumption for game two. So um, just not anything I can get involved in for that. Yeah. By the way, Philly's first five run run line full game money line double result is minus one twenty. Okay. Ooh, little news there. Justin Verlander will make his season debut on Friday. We have the Tampa Bay Rays and the LA Angels. What a um, what an interesting game this was last night. Which yes. my I, I know we had the full game up on the site. This is why I wish we had first fives available to put up on the site because I got in and got out after five innings and they won the first five three one, but they lost the full game, which was annoying to see. Uh, but. Uh, minus 120 for the Rays, total of eight in this spot. Let's take a look at the line history in this game here, where we have Zach Littell and Reed Detmers, your pitching matchup here. Uh, line opened up at a 130, down to a 118. So we've had a 12 cent line movement towards the Halos here. And the line opened up at an eight at minus 110, it's now an eight and a half at minus 106. So we've had a move towards the over, we've had a move towards Tampa, uh, or towards um, not Tampa, LA in this game. 64% of the tickets, 93% of the cash is on the over in this spot with the line moving towards the over. And we have 88% of the tickets and 77% of the cash is on the raise, the line moving towards the Angels in this spot here. Uh, taking a look at the pitching matchup here, I like Reed Detmers. Uh, Reed Detmers is a pitcher that I would rather back than fade. And he has looked awesome to start the year. Um, he gave up one earned run on two hits, three walks, five innings pitched, seven strikeouts against the Orioles in Baltimore. And then he faced the Red Sox on a back-to-back. The first game gave up one earned run on three hits, one uh, one walk, uh, 12 strikeouts and six innings pitched. And I think the more incredible feat behind his whole season is he went and six days later faded, faced the exact same team. And shut him down again. No earned runs on three hits, two walks, seven strikeouts, and six and a third innings pitch. I am very interested in the LA Angels first five in this game. Only first five. I cannot trust them full game. We learned that lesson yesterday. Zach Littell has been awesome as well. Uh, he's given up a combined two earned runs, 
this year on 15 hits, five walks, 15 strikeouts, and 15 and a third innings pitched. He's looked pretty good. He's faced this Angels team last start where he gave up one earned run on six hits, three walks, four strikeouts, and four and a third innings pitch. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at Zach Littell here. I'm gonna say do it again. You shut down this Angels lineup last game. Do it again. I dare you. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Angels first five here in this game. Uh, I go back to the same thing that won yesterday was taking them five and fly, and I can get plus one or two on Fanduel. So I'm gonna take a little five and fly here. First five money line Angels for me. It's under or nothing. I, I like both these pitchers. Um, I'm just gonna. Why, say, is this, why is this total moving up though? I don't know. I, I, maybe I don't. Know. I, I, I don't. I don't really follow the the whole um, market trends. And, um, and also, I don't. I don't thing. look at that as much as you do. I, I know. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, and one one more thing that I would I would recommend out there, and I know this is my philosophy with baseball in general, but even more in this game with what happened last night, with them going twelve innings. Not only would this be uh, for you under or nothing, this would really be first five under or nothing. Because both the these bullpens. bullpens have really struggled this year, and they're depleted after last night. They had to use how many pitchers last night? And that's why I'm staying. That's why I'm not betting the game. I'm staying off of it. It'd be first five under or nothing if you're going to be betting this total. I think personally. Uh, that's so, good. but for me, I'm going to I'm going to I want to just go with the Angels first five. In this spot. Okay. Under eight, it would be looked that way. I saw Fetty walk up for pat pitching matchup for Kansas City and Chicago game two. Woof. Good luck. We don't we don't bet game two. So um I need, I need to see what happens game one first. Taking the nerfy um for the LA Tampa Bay split out on the sides of the first two games. There you go. Why is Tampa money line 125? Um, but it has the Angels run line. Because the lines flip so often, especially with pick'em lines, they're going to they're going to give you the opposite one for whatever reason. Sometimes, so it's it is what it is. Sometimes you can't just go into the. There, normally, there's alternative lines, and you can bet the reverse run line per se. It's a reverse run line, but you should be able to get it for both sides. Uh, let's uh, head to this one, Nick. Yeah, the last baseball game of the night. This one first pitch at seven ten. So we get a nice early night of um, yep. a basketball or a baseball, so we can watch the Arizona Coyotes play their last game at ten o'clock tonight. Cleveland Guardians and the Boston Red Sox. The Guardian the Red Sox minus one twenty five favorites with total of uh, nine in this game. Let's take a look. Ben Lively and Tanner Houck, your pitching matchup here. I opened up with the Red Sox around one. 50. It reopened up yesterday at 1148 at 137. It's and since then it's gone down all the way to 124. Line opened up at a nine at minus 105, and it's been nine basically the entire time up until about 20 minutes ago when it dropped to eight and a half. So it finally dropped to the under half a run, and it's moved towards the Guardians. Even though 80% of the tickets and 98% of the cash are on the over, and the lines moved towards the under, which is kind of interesting there. And then we have 55% of the tickets, 81% of the cash on the Red Sox. And the line's moving towards the Guardians uh, in this one here. Ben Lively and Tanner Howe. Ben Lively making his season debut here with the Guardians. Last year, he appeared in 19 games, started 14 of them, went 4-7 and seven with a 5.38 ERA, and 88 and two-thirds in next pitch with the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, on the uh, flip side, Tanner Houck making his uh, fourth appearance of the year uh, where he's given up four earned runs in in uh, 17 and two thirds innings pitched, he's given up 19. Uh, he struck out 19 batters, walked two, and he's given up uh, 19 hits so far this year. All four of his earned runs, though, were last he game against it. the LA Angels. Yeah. Previous to that, he had been a shut down pitcher, and this market tells me that both these pitchers pitch well today. With all the money, all the tickets coming in on the over, you got the line moving towards an under. Uh, it's very interesting in this game. I can only look first five under in this spot. Um, it's a pass for me in this game, most likely. And I want to trust the Guardians, but I just don't know what to expect from Ben Lively. So uh, this will end with a, a pass. Uh, not a huge card for me in the MLB today, but um, but I, I kind of like the card. I like the card, too. And by the way, 
um, with the with that ending. The card for the member only is up for anybody. The card is essentially for people who um, kind of can't make the show on time. And uh, if you don't want to have to rewatch the entire show, the card's right there. And I added my college baseball to the bottom of it. So I um, figured I'd throw that one out there. Um, I pass on this game as well. It'd be a lean towards the Red Sox. They've just been struggling lately. Um, really want nothing to do with this game. At this point in the night, you said something about the Coyotes. No, it's it's playoff basketball time. I know. I, that, that's the more interesting game for me because I would like to. Uh, Cleveland money line. I like the Cleveland hitters. They show up. Uh, sometimes they do. All right, Nick. Let's do this. This game's caught my attention a little bit. It does. And let's get into it here. Uh, we have the Miami Heat taking on the Philadelphia 76ers. The Sixers are five-point favorites with a total of 208 in this game. Let's take a look at the line history in this spot here where I'm, I'm getting up uh, getting up as we speak. There we go. Where we have this line opened up with the Philadelphia 76ers as four-point favorites. It immediately went to five about two minutes since the uh, after the line opened. So we've basically been seeing five as the opening number because it was kind of – see, I'm what I, the way I'm starting to look at these market moves, Tim, is not the first line that was available. It was what was available about a few minutes after because sometimes we'll see the line drop and the line move 30 cents or 20 cents or 10 cents and then, and then just like settle because just the market needed to correct itself. It put a line out there. It got hammered one way. and it got, I think it opened at four. It opened up at a five. Uh, it opened up at a four. Yes, it opened up at a four, but about a minute and a half later, it was a five. On yeah, exactly. line. So line opened up at a 208, and now we're actually seeing a 208 and a half uh, in this game. It, it opened up at a 208, and then um, uh, and then it went up to a, a it went down to a 207 about four hours later. So that was not really the market correcting itself. Maybe it was because this game was a couple days away when they did release these lines on April the 14th. Here. Um, let's take a look at the cash flow in this game here where we have the Miami uh, Heat and the Sixers. Let's get this up. 72% of the tickets, 98% of the cash is on the Philadelphia 76ers on the spread. Uh, 29,065 tickets in. 55% of the tickets are on the under, and the line's gone from a 208 to a 208 and a half. Um, and we have 12% of the tickets, 37% of the cash is on the Heat. I think this is too many points. And... And I get it. I know a lot of people are going to like the Sixers. And I think when you look longer term, I think this is a game where the Sixers win, but the Heat cover. And I think five points is too many uh, for this matchup here. Um, maybe do I look to cut it down to a first quarter, first half, because I can see MB getting 427 free throws in the fourth quarter. Sure. Uh, but I think I'm interested in the Miami Heat early in this game. Uh, because I can see maybe Philly taking over late. Um, Philly is coming in as the hottest team in, in the NBA heading into this game, which makes it very tough to, for me to want to fade them. But maybe it's just a first half play for me. Um, and first half plus three and a half over on um, FanDuel is minus 115. I think I'm going to move on that. I think I think that's where I'm interested in, is the heat to show up early. But I can see the Sixers taking over late. I would like. I'm going to take a look at what this line movement's been for the first half, and maybe make a decision on that. I'm more interested in the uh, the later game uh, with between the Hawks and the Bulls than I am for this game, to be completely honest. Um, but um, do we not have first half line movements in this game? Um, but yeah, I I I'm interested in Miami. It's it's heat or pass for me. I'm on the Sixers. Um, <laughs> I. Honestly, with the team that they have assembled now, if they had that team all year, they're not in the playing game. Um, they're in the playoffs, and they're probably a two seed or a three seed in the East. Um, that being said, I I do see some value um, in the Sixers, and and keep in mind, this is also a Sixers team that earlier I placed a plus four hundred bet on them to miss the playoffs. I'm hedging out of it. Um, I think they smash here at home. That was be, that was when I thought Embiid was going to be out longer, and he was not out, out as long as I thought he would be. And to be honest, I thought that was going to be a spot where the Sixers were going to be without him for the playing games. Like they, then the Sixers would have dropped to a, a nine seed or something. 
a nine or a 10 matchup, but seeing that they're in the seven, I'm hedging out of that. I got the 76ers minus five. I think they win this one by, uh, by, by double digits. Hmm. Uh, you can get a five and a half now. Uh, go clown in the under. Uh, huh. Damn it. And the thing is, I could I I picked the Knicks to win that series. I could see the Sixers beating the Knicks. Absolutely. I could Absolutely. see the Sixers, Sixers being I could see you know what? Can I make the bull take? One of these two teams will make it out of the uh plans. Uh, I will make it out of the first round. Cause if Miami plays against um Boston with the way that Miami plays, I think they're alive. Fair. Um, oh, this is a this is a tough matchup. This is a tough this is a tough game. It really is. But let's head to the uh, last game, Nick. Both games went under last night. I could see this game going over tonight. Maybe not. Uh, I, Maybe I can see that one going over, but I could definitely see this one. What? Yeah, I actually I have a little bit more interest in the side in this game than I do the total. Uh, in this one, we have the Atlanta Hawks and the Chicago Bulls. Bulls minus three total of 222 and a half. What a disgusting playoff matchup this is. Why is this? Why are these two teams have any chance at even making the playoffs? Is beyond me. Uh, because you have the Hawks four games under 500. You have the Bulls 10 games under five. No, you have the Hawks 10 games under. You have the Bulls four games under. I apologize there. This line opened up around a three, three and a half range, and it's and it's a three we're seeing seeing here with Atlanta. And the line opened up at a two nineteen. It's up to two twenty three. So we do have a move towards the over in this spot here. I think with both games going under yesterday, I think both overs are worth a look today. And I think that's where I might move for this first game is the over, uh, which I can get two oh seven and a half on bet uh, ESPN bet. Um, for me in this game. I'm looking at Atlanta in this spot. Uh, we have 38% of the tickets and 66% of the cash on the Bulls. Then the line moving towards towards the Bulls, but we have 34% of the tickets, 60% of, or no, no, the line movement. Uh, there's been basically no line movement. 34% of the tickets, 60% of the cash on the Hawks on the line. I just and Trey Young's back in the lineup as well for this Hawks team, which gives mm-hmm. me interest with them here to say screw the points. I mean, I can get three and a half here on ESPN bet. So maybe I just take the three and a half and I go the plus 125 route as well for the half unit play. I'm going with Atlanta in this game. I think the Atlanta Hawks are the uh, are the best NBA bet on the board today. It's the Atlanta Hawks uh, in this game. Uh, I think this is a better betting game. This is a shittier matchup, but this is the better betting game for me. And I'm going to be on the Hawks at plus three and a half and at plus 125 over on um, – ESPN bet. You know what neither of these teams do, though? Play defense. There you go. Ding, ding. I got 121 and a half. It's up to a two, uh, sorry, 221 and a half. It's up to a 222 and a half. I would still take it up to 224. Um, I, I see this one as a high offensive back and forth game. Um, I'm not really going to be interested in a side. Um, I don't really think it matters who wins this game just because – I could easily see whoever wins this game losing by double digits to Miami. Um, we are I, I I don't see either of these teams beating Miami in the in the play. No, I um, don't. So the only game that really matters today is Philly and Miami, and is who want, who doesn't have to play the Celtics first? Yeah, it's it's a really big incentive to win that game. Um, although I think either 76ers or Miami can push the Celtics to six games. Because we said that last year with with um, with um Milwaukee. Oh, what's Milwaukee going to do against Bo- – um, who was the number one seed last year? Milwaukee, yes. Milwaukee against Miami. Miami against Milwaukee, yeah. And, oh, there, there's no way Milwaukee loses that series, and down they go. Um, And the Milwaukee Bucks were the best team in basketball. Well – Boston Celtics are the best team in basketball. I could easily see them getting pushed into six games or seven games against either Philadelphia or Miami. That being said, I'm on the over in this game. I don't really think it matters. Neither of these two teams are going anywhere. Uh, this is in the 90s. Hawks, Bulls, uh, playoffs. Man, what happened mid 
Uh, what mid matchup? No Jordan. <laughs> pass. That is fair. No Jordan. Pass. <laughs> that is all the games for today. Um, before we head on out, we'll go ahead and um, do the usual uh, recapping and all that good stuff. And I'm going to switch the background to boom because this one, uh, the other background still doesn't have the um, logos for all the other stuff. But uh, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, and TikTok, um, all of those are linked down below. We post on that every single day. So if you guys are interested in shorts, um, which which kind of give out some plays and stuff and all that stuff is over on the TikTok, the Instagram, and the Twitter. If you guys are interested in becoming a member of the YouTube channel, um, we put up our card every single day for anybody who misses the show. So if you miss the show, you're late, all that stuff, um, and like, oh, what are, what are Nick and Tim on today? Well, boom, right there. It's up on the uh, mem- it's on the member only portion of the community post. So it's a community post, but only members can see it. So if you guys are interested in that. It's right there. Um, recap for today. Obviously, I'm still not betting anything in hockey until the playoffs, although I was looking at some uh, playoff props. Um, I'm already going to be on Toronto. I know Nick's against me. I'm going to be on Tampa Bay. I know Nick's against me. I'm going to be on the Islanders, plus one and a half and plus 130. I was looking towards Colorado, minus one and a half, and the Capitals. Um I'm taking a shot with the Capitals this year. There's no way the President's Trophy winners lose in the first round, right, Nick? They very, yeah. I mean, anyways, the uh, Giants game just started. Uh, we're on the money line there. Uh, Baltimore money line, run line, Mets run line, Tigers run line, uh, Astros. Uh, sorry, uh, Braves run line, Nationals, Oakland, Seattle, and then the Sixers and the and the over in the Bulls game, Nick. Yeah. Uh, we'll kick it on off with the NHL. Arizona Coyotes plus 170 on DraftKings. Um, in the MLB, I am on the San Francisco Giants. You can probably get a better number on them now because it's the bottom of the first and they did not score. Uh, so uh, you could probably get a better number now if you like the uh, if you like those San Francisco Giants. I got minus 105 on bet 365. Minnesota Twins minus 110 on Fanatics. Tigers first five minus a half minus 105 on BetMGM. Gi- Tigers full game minus 135 on Caesars. Toronto Blue Jays minus 115 on Bet365. Washington Nationals plus 210 on Fanatics. Oakland Athletics first five plus 115 on Bet365. Chicago Arizona first five under five minus 125 on ESPN Bet. Seattle Mariners minus 130 on Bet365. And wrapping up the card with the LA Angels. First five money line at at plus 102 over on FanDuel. And then wrapping it up with the late NBA game starting at 930 with the Atlanta Hawks plus three and a half minus 115 on ESPN bet and Atlanta Hawks money line at plus 125 also on ESPN bet. Oh, I forgot to mention, and I know they're scrolling across the bottom, but I'll quickly talk about them real quick. Um, College baseball, we're taking Texas Tech. Uh, after they blew a 7 0 lead last night to Arkansas, I think they can bounce back and beat Arkansas today, who is the current number two team in the nation. I'll be on Kennesaw State, a little bit of a pick them at home versus Georgia Southern. Should be a really good game. I know uh, Kennesaw State's moving their way up. Uh, I believe they're going to the Fun Belt next year. So this could be a good conference matchup next year. Um, and it's an in state rival. And you know, I love the small schools when it comes to in state rivals. Uh, Kansas State money line minus 110 against Northeastern. USC plus 150 in UC Irvine. I'm still not a buyer on this UC Irvine uh, team. I know they're ranked. I don't believe them. Uh, I know a lot of people were really, really hyped up on them. They've played and beaten nobody. So, um, no, I don't care about them. Uh, and then Washington State, even money. Uh, I'm fading Grand Canyon after their big win last night. Uh, defeating Arizona, who had won 11 straight games. Um, so kind of a fade there. Those are the five college baseball plays as well. Boom. Um, we'll take the uh, take Islanders to win the series in six. Also a lot of draws. I like it. I like it. I think you could get nine to one on that. Do you guys ever bet first, period, first five innings over? No. And the reason why is Nick loves to get runs from the bullpen. So, yes. Unless yeah, there's a very actually, specific reason too, like a pitcher that has been god awful, like last year, who's Austin Gomber. No, Adam Wainwright. No, no um, 
I the only times I've bet first five overs, I've had full game overs as well. And it's my way of doubling up on a game. But no, my philosophy with baseball is first five unders, full game overs. Because bullpens are failed starters. Um, it's pretty funny. Two of the worst gold differentials in history made the playoffs. Ooh, runner, Marlins a runner on first. I'm not worried about it. Uh, twins are now plus 109. Not worried about it. Uh, we, we understood what you meant by it. Obviously not betting the fifth inning over. That's very specific and nobody bets that. We knew you were talking about first five. We got you, Robert. We got you. We, we read you. Uh, but that's going to do it for this edition of the Earl Sports Bet Show. We'll be back again tomorrow with another one and outro. See you guys later. 